<laughs> oh my goodness. I, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I, let me just start with your own words. So Zavini, in an interview, you pointed out, you said, and you said this also in the pageant, I grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me with my kind of skin and my kind of hair was never considered beautiful. I think that it is time for that to stop, and it stops today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, hearing your whole life that you're not the standard, mm -hmm. and then you break the mold. What was that like for oh, you? That was so incredible. You know, at that moment, I felt, even if I don't win, I have to say this, somebody has to hear this, you know? I've already made top three, so I need to say it. I need to deliver the message. And so to win was actually just like, more than I really bargained for, you know? I just <laughs> really needed to get my message out. <laughs> you said more than you bargained for. Yeah. What did you, what did you bargain <laughs> for? What did you think was possible that night? You know, for me, I just wanted to be there. I mm. felt like being there would be enough because I'd already, you know, won my national pageant. Even there, it had, it's something that had never happened before with someone who has my hair, really, because there have been, you know, black winners before. Did you feel then, pressure to change your hair? Um, you, before I entered, people did ask, are you going to go in with your hair? And it was a, a question that came up so many times. And I thought to myself, if people keep asking me this, it means that they don't see the way that I am now as beautiful. Yeah. And if I change my hair, then it means that I think the same thing, too. Yeah. So, the social media reaction, I, I, I've just been, I've gotten a joy for the first time in many years of reading Twitter. I lost <laughs> love for it. Some of the tweets, for the first time, this is what someone said, for the first time I feel seen around the world, Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss America, Miss Teen USA, all black women, they look like me, they look like my sisters, they look like my family. Someone said, what a time to be alive. All major pageant titles are dripping in melanin. Black girl magic. Um, I love that. <laughs> And you know what, uh, Chesley, I started to think about it and I said, you know what, I get the self-pride. I get it, being a black woman and seeing this. But all women should feel a sense of pride when they see you mm -hmm. on that stage. <laughs> because for each of you at some point, someone told you there was no room for you. Mm -hmm. And you found room. How did you, I guess, muster up the courage to beat the odds, to be the underdog who becomes the queen. <laughs> well, I think for me, it was important to see examples in my community. My mom, she was Mrs. North Carolina U.S. 2002. So she won this title for married women when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And so I remember being a child and seeing her example. And I think mm. seeing that example made it possible for me um, because I knew if even if I'm a black woman, even if there haven't been that many black women to win this title, my mom did it and I can too. Yeah. Um, and she was actually the second black woman to be Mrs. North Carolina. I love you bragging on mom. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that. It was seeing that example that was so important to me and seeing that example that made things very possible for me. It is, and Kaylee, your hair also came a big yeah. conversation <laughs> um, because you decided to wear your natural hair. Yes, yeah, so growing up, I straightened my hair since I was six years old. I always got a, one of those Brazilian chocolate treatments, mm -hmm. and um, it's just what I knew. I went to a predominantly all-white public school since second grade, and I, wanted, I was a big mommy's girl, so I wanted to look as much as I could like my mom, and she has mm -hmm. blue eyes, long blonde hair, and so my way of trying to do that was straightening my hair. But going through high school, trying to figure out who I was, I like realized like, hey, maybe I should switch it up. So I cut it and I chopped it, got the big chop, had it curly. And I wasn't even thinking about pageants when I did the big chop. I was just doing it for me. And so I had people asking like, oh, are you gonna put extensions on? Are you gonna have a sew in for, for when you compete? And I said, no, because, <laughs> because it's my hair. It's what I'm comfortable in. And before the pageant, you spent the night before oh, individually yeah. curling your hair yes. yourself. So that's one of the way techniques I learned for if I want it to be really defined. Because it's like everybody thinks having naturally curly hair, like it's easy. You just yeah. go oh, in the easy. shower and you just jump out. It's just no. like that. It's like, no, <laughs> that doesn't work. So the night before, you're going. Twirl by twirl. I'll take tiny sections and I'll put like leave-in conditioner in my hair and then I'll just take a small little piece of hair and I'll coil it around my finger. Every single one. Every oh, single piece. Takes forever. And then I'm left with non-frizzy <laughs> <laughs>